Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, Rick, and thank you all. It's wonderful to be here with you, some of you whom I know, some of you whom I'm getting to know. Uh, how on earth do I dare come to a meeting of executive search consultants with a talk called Talent is Overrated? It doesn't mean what it sounds like it means, and we'll get to that uh, in the course of things here. I actually believe passionately that the human capital in any organization, which has obviously always been important, really is more crucial to the success of that organization today than it ever has been before, and this can be shown not in some sort of vague, up with people, happy talk kind of way, but with real dollars and cents. And that in fact, the value of that human capital is gonna get much greater in the years ahead. We'll get to all that. For now, let's focus on the second part. Real truths of great performance. I want us to think about a simple question. Where does great performance really come from? And I'm asking you to look really deep inside yourself and ask, what do you think is the answer to this question? What do you really believe is the answer to this question? If some young son or daughter or nephew or niece asked you this, what would you say? All of us carry around really deep-seated beliefs about the answer to this question. And that's why I'm asking us all to really think about it. There's a reason that I'm asking us all to think about it. It matters because standards are rising. The reason we have to think about this more than we used to is that the standards all around us are rising. And I emphasize this because there's a tendency sometimes among a lot of us to think, oh, geez, you know, everywhere we look, things seem to be getting worse and standards are going down the drain and so forth. No, it isn't true, especially in the world of business. We are being asked to perform at a higher level all the time. We can see it most easily in products and services, right? Most easily of all in the infotech products that we all have in our pockets and on our desks and in our briefcases, right? They get better, more powerful, smaller, and cheaper every month. An iPod in 1975 would have been the size of a room and would have cost a billion dollars. And that's not an exaggeration, that's really what it would have. But it's not just the infotech, although that's where it's easiest to see. We see it in all kinds of other products. You know, look at your washing machine. It uses less water, less electricity, less detergent, gets the clothes cleaner, and costs less in real terms than it did 10 years ago. And it is most definitely true in our own roles. We are in something that has never existed before in history, a large-scale global talent market. Product markets, capital markets, they were global for a long time. Labor markets, talent markets have always been local or regional. Now they're global for the first time. We talk about world-class performance and being world-class and so forth when we throw it around very loosely. The truth is, we actually have to be world class today because we are competing against others who do what we do or can do what we do all around the world. There's something that to me symbolizes the rise of standards, literally and metaphorically. I'm gonna show it to you here. Uh, not too long ago, the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety took a 2009 Chevy Malibu and its equivalent from 50 years earlier, a 1959 Chevy Bel Air, and crashed them into each other at 40 miles an hour. 
Now, before I show it to you, just think about what you imagine is going to happen. Because I've asked people about this without giving them my little talk about rising standards. And just said, what do you think is going to happen? And what they usually say is, oh, man, that 1959 car, it was bigger, heavier, had a steel bumper, not some fiberglass thing on the front, all of which is true. It's going to cream that 2009 car going to wipe it out, right? Well, okay. So they did it. <coughs> That's what happened. Now, there's the 2009 Chevy Malibu. And you can see, while it's been in a terrible accident, the passenger compartment is not even deformed. It has not even lost any of its shape. And you can't tell it, but the airbag's deployed. And so the crash test dummy in there, you know, if that were a real driver, they'd be okay. Here's the 1959 Bel Air, okay? That driver is not okay, all right? <laughs> this is a picture of what happens if we try to bring yesterday's standards into competition with today's standards. In this case, you're literally dead. In business, you're competitively dead. Understanding where great performance really comes from is something that we have to do more than ever. So I want us to think about it, to really get in the frame of mind of thinking about great performance. And I don't mean really good performance. I mean just incredibly, staggeringly, awesomely great performance, wherever you can think of. Uh, let's think of some examples. This is uh, Tiger, 2005 Masters, 16th hole on Sunday afternoon. He's in a terrible situation. The commentator says he'll be lucky to leave it within six feet of the pin. Where does this come from, right? And he went on to win that year. How does somebody get to be like that? And you know, I mean, he's so good, he made it stop with the Nike logo facing the camera. I mean, where does this come from? You know, okay, in a completely different realm. I apologize, I don't have video here, although video of a world chess champion is actually not that different from a still photograph. Uh, th th this is Gary Kasparov. Now, in the world of chess, as some of you know, there is a very rigorous system of assigning points to the players and ranking them, and the rankings are published every month. Gary Kasparov was number one in the world rankings every month for 20 years. Nobody has ever achieved that level of dominance in this before. Where does that come from? Or in another realm entirely. This is Lang Lang, the Chinese pianist. At the time of this uh, video, he was 24 years old. And as you can see, you know, he's not only technically incredibly good, uh, there is some artistry here as well. There's some uh, interpretation. How does this happen? I saw him just last June in China. He's better than ever. How does somebody get to be that incredibly good? And it's true also in business, just in case we had any doubt. You will recognize the man on the left, of course, as Herb Kelleher the founder and longtime CEO of Southwest Airlines, which was, after all, and remains over time, the most successful airline that has ever existed, the only airline to have made a profit every year for over 40 years. The lovely lady on the right is Gary Kelly, the current CEO. Uh, and, and yes, the longer you look at it, the weirder it gets. And, uh, <laughs> This is something they do every Halloween at Southwest. Now, there are a couple of points 
really to be made here. One, this is a, a world-class performance, right? this organization. And Herb happens to believe profoundly in the point of view I'm going to expound here. And in fact, he provided a very kind endorsement for the book. Uh, but the other thing to take out of it is at most, look, I don't know what things are like at your company, but I don't know if this happens very often where you work, right? It doesn't happen very often at most companies, and heaven knows it doesn't happen very often at other airlines. World-class great performers often appear strange, okay? They are doing stuff that others aren't doing. And that takes courage, but it is a very general phenomenon among great performers. This is weird, okay, but it carries.